Welcome to Cooking with Bobby Joe. Today I'm doing another review and I'm kind of excited about this one. I received this in a mail last week to review. Check this out. It's a hummingbird feeder with a wireless camera built in. How cool is that? It comes well packaged. This box was inside a bigger Amazon box. This is a flyer with a code to scan for the app and some additional features you can purchase with the app. There's a bird feeding guide, a quick setup guide, how to fill the feeder, And now we have some boxes within the box. I will go over what's in that in just a minute. And below all of that is the feeder. And these are purchased. The long skinny box had these brushes and an antenna in it. I have a large brush for cleaning inside the feeder and a small one for cleaning the small spaces inside the feeding ports. The smaller box has the charging cable, additional feeding ports, and the hanging hook. The first thing I need to do is charge the camera. I'm pulling the plastic cover off the back. There's a charging port under this little flap. Okay, it's fully charged. The next step is to remove the camera and power it on. Let's see if we can get this opened. Okay, so there's another charging port. There's an SD card port, and there's already an SD card in this port, and a power button. This small button is the power button. So you hold it down for a few seconds, it makes a noise, and the blue light comes on on the camera. Once you have the camera on, close that cover, and you wanna push the camera back in the feeder. You'll hear it snap once it's in there good. I wasn't videoing when I removed the camera, so on the back, see this little plastic flap? You just hold that down and you push the camera out. When you put the camera back in, that's what you hear snap. It'll snap back into place. Next, I'm gonna add the app to my phone. I've already completed the app setup, but let me take you through it. It takes you step by step. First, it tells you to assemble the feeder. Then it tells you to choose a good installation location, and it's important to choose a location with a strong Wi-Fi signal. Next, set up the motion detection and notification, and I will show you that in a minute. You can purchase a plan where it identifies birds based on AI technology. I'm not purchasing anything extra. We're just going to use what comes with it. When you click Explore, it shows all the different items that they offer. When I select Home, it takes me to my camera. It shows the battery level, which is still fully charged, and it has been out in my garden for a week now, and I haven't had to charge it. It shows my Wi-Fi signal, which is very good. And if you select Library, it will show all the videos that are saved. If you had this in front of your house, you would know when someone was coming to the door because it notifies of any motion detected. And it doesn't notify of birds only. When I set up my camera, it asked me to select the location of the camera, so I selected Garden. That's why it says garden under location management. You can always change it. You click on motion detection and here's where you can change those settings. You can also set how long you want your video to be. 
it is automatically set at 10 seconds, but I think I will change it to 20 seconds because my hummingbirds like to hang around longer than 10 seconds. I haven't set up a sleep plan yet, and I think I will. The hummingbirds show up before the sun comes up, so I will set it for early in the morning. And the days are starting to get shorter, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it a little later for now. So we'll go from 2100 hours to 5 in the morning for the sleep schedule. A week ago today was the first time I placed it in the garden, and I ended up turning the notifications off on Saturday. I love getting notifications when a bird is on the feeder, but I found myself watching hummingbirds all day instead of doing things more productive. I absolutely love this camera feeder, and it has a clear video, easy to set up and use. The battery lasts a long time. It also has an ant moat up top. I fill that with water to keep the ants out. The smaller birds like the chickadees and the tufted titmouse, they love drinking from the ant moat. It's also supposed to be bee proof, but the bees are usually busy with the flowers in the garden and they're not on the hummingbird feeders in my garden. Okay, enough of the app. Let's get back to the feeder setup. I kind of got ahead of myself there, so let's go back to the feeder. I always rinse my feeders out with warm water before placing anything in them. Remove the bottom on the feeder. It screws off and it screws back on. The bottom is where you fill it, so you just turn it upside down and you fill it up in the bottom. It's simple to make your own nectar. Don't use the kind with food coloring. There is no need to have those extra additives in your hummingbird's food. All you need is a fourth a cup of sugar, one cup of water, boil it all together for a couple of minutes, let it cool, and then you have your hummingbird nectar. I would not fill this feeder all the way up with nectar. You'll need to change it in a few days, so no need to fill it all the way up unless you have a whole lot of hummingbird traffic. You can see the blue light on the camera. That means the camera's on and it's recording any motion. Okay, so now I'm pouring the nectar in the bottom. I'm screwing the bottom back on. Turn it right side up, place your hook on top, screw the antenna on the back, and place the perch on the front, and now it is ready to use. So this is where I placed it in the garden. Now let's look at some footage from the camera. I am very excited to have this amazing hummingbird feeder so I can get up close views of all these amazing little hummingbirds. Thanks so much for watching. There's a link in the video description if you want to check it out for this hummingbird feeder. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself projects, gardening, bird videos, and drool-worthy human and doggy treats. Y'all have a blessed day.